being involved in, in, in a, a network of 33 lay schools. We've worked really hard. There's hundreds of teachers involved, and we've trained 5,000 in the last three years. Amen. But there are, as far as I understood, last 17 million Seventh-day Adventists. So, you know, we're not trying to train every Seventh-day Adventist necessarily, but we'd at least like to get a start. And I, we need to pray for our, our leadership because they're devising plans. And this falls, uh, what I understand, there's going to be a, more of a master plan presented to, to reach, to, to, to work towards training every Seventh-day Adventist to be a medical missionary. So we're just kind of getting our feet wet in it and hopefully you know, learning from experience. And, and uh, by God's grace, the, the Lord is doing something. So I want to share with you the, the amazing things. I, it's, it's a blessing. I, I can't imagine a better job. I sit, you know, it, it, well, I don't sit in an office too much, but uh, when I'm traveling and I'm at my office or whatever, I, I get emails from all corners of the earth with these amazing testimonies of what's happening and what people are doing once they're trained. So this is what I want to look at. We'll look at some, uh, some, some testimonies. We'll just start with just a few, a couple of things. This movement is a global movement, and we have to have that foremost in our minds, especially, you know, uh, uh, Americans tend to be a little bit self-centered in our, in our country. We need to think outside the box. Just because there are a lot of training programs available here, it does not mean there are a lot of training programs available abroad. But we have to reach the world. We have to go to all nations. We are called to preach the gospel, to teach all nations, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. We want to talk strategy this morning, beginning with revival. Of course, this is the perfect place to start. We need personal and, and, uh, and church-wide revival. It is a revival of true godliness among us. We've heard this a lot this last year. Is the greatest and most urgent of our needs. This is where we begin. We must fall on our knees and be revived by the Spirit of God through Repentance, confession, and the outpouring of God's Spirit in our lives and our surrender to allowing God to use us. To seek this should be our first work. Right? So this is, this is vital. This is, the, this is the beginnings. But it is not the end. And I want, I want to just point out this, this little sentence here that, that uh, strikes me pretty, pretty strongly. I think about it a lot. Um, especially when we talk about revival and prayer and, and so forth, just notice the sentence. Let there be more earnest prayer, and then let us work in harmony with our prayers. So we are to pray, but then we work in harmony with our prayers. And uh, I think we should have this in our minds. When we pray, ask us, asking ourselves, are we working in harmony with our prayers? If we pray for... If we pray for a delay even of the second coming of Christ so that we can preach the gospel to the whole world or be used by Christ to lead some souls to, to, to him, what then should we do? We should offer ourselves, make ourselves available to work you know, with, with Jesus in, in reaching souls. That's working in harmony with your prayers. If, you were, if somebody was out of a job and they were desperate and they were praying for a job, they were in their apartment on their knees praying for work to support their families, and they prayed all day long, all, you know, all the whole day long, all night long. They prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. It's a good thing to pray, but they, this is just an illustration. I use. They might not be working in harmony with their prayers because God might want them to go look for a job, right? Okay. So you pray and you ask for God to guide you, and then you go and look for a job and watch God you know, bless. So we, we, we pray for certain things, but we have to work in harmony with our prayers. I, for one, don't want to be in this earth much longer I want Jesus to come soon, but, you know, I have family that are unconverted, and I have a lot, and, and you know, there's the condition of the world, the condition of the, the, the situation right now just seems that right now is not the right time, so I just want a little bit longer, but I'm praying for a little bit more time, not so I can have a, you know, get a big career and, and a huge retirement and have family and grand, children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and a white picket fence and everything like that. I'm, you know, that, if that can happen, that's wonderful. Family's a blessing. But I want to work, you know, while the, while the, while the day is nigh, right? And it's, it's, it's a blessing to be involved with God's work. Okay. Um, I'm, this is going to be the last reference I'll share, and then we'll go into some, some uh, stories and examples, testimonies. But it's, it's, it's several, several references from one page in the Ministry of Healing, 149. That's incredible. And I, I think we just need to take note of it. Um, the need for every member to be engaged. Ministry of Healing, page 149. The monotony of our service for God needs to be broken up. 
Every church member should be engaged in some line of service for the master. Some cannot do as much as other, others, but everyone should do his utmost to roll back the tide of disease and distress that is sweeping over our world. She's in the midst of a discussion of the health message and how all our, our church members need to be geared up and trained up to reach the masses with this wonderful message of healing physically and spiritually in preparation for the Lord's return. Every church member should be engaged. How is that going to happen? Of course, this is our need. We need revival, then we need... You know, revival doesn't last unless there's engagement in service of God. So how are we going to engage the membership? This is how we do it. We have to teach them how to start. Many would be willing to work if they were taught how to what? Begin. This is what, I, this is what we are seeing, and this is what you'll see in these testimonies. We're only teaching people how to begin, and then we move on to the next church. And then we hear the stories of the previous church, and they are active. They are doing things. They are excited, and there's a, there's a, there's a methodology in, in getting them to that, to that level. But they need to be instructed, and they need to be encouraged. They need instruction, and they need encouragement. They need to be taught how to begin. If you can get them to begin, you're going you're to have the ball rolling. Every church should be a what, everyone? Training. A training school. Every church should be a training school. A church is not just a place to go on Sabbath morning to you know, be present at a worship service. Right? A church, to have a living church, a dynamic church, there needs to be engagement in God's work, and the church needs to be the training center that helps teach people how to begin. Right? It instructs. It encourages. We show testimonies. This is how we are to get our churches active and living, preaching the gospel. There should be, school, there, uh, there should be schools of health, uh, cooking schools and classes and various lines of Christian help work. So everyone was take a role. Everyone has different talents, right? So everyone doesn't have to do the exact same thing. Not everyone has to do cooking schools. But everyone has different talents, right? I'm not really that good at cooking schools my, myself. I, I'm not a cook, right? We have some, some DVDs down there. My wife is the cook, and I'm just the, you know, the, the, the fool that you know, has to be told what to do everything, you know. But, uh, you know, I can do other things. You know, I like to organize the health expos and do counseling and work with people on, a, on an individual basis and, and do training and so forth. Everyone has different things that they can do. This is all on the same page, Minister of Healing 149. So schools of health, training schools in the church. The church should become a training school. This will revive our churches. Lastly, the, the manner of education, the manner of training is, is, is clearly told here. And we're not, we're not going to be able to follow this reference in this, in this class. I'll, I'll show you why here. There should not only be teaching, but actual, what? Work. Under experienced instructors. So the best way to teach someone is not just for, you know, teaching. Me sitting here and telling you teaching on and on about everything that's going on. It's really not the best. It's one part of it. But if we actually got geared up and trained to do something, then we all go and do it, and you are face to face with people in the community working, it's a completely different experience. Let the teachers lead the way in working among the people, and as others, uniting with them will learn from their example. One example is worth more than many precepts. So we can teach and teach and take many seminars. Uh, you know, I, I've had, interesting, I've had, I've had people come to, to uh, Wilder to become students and they show me a stack of certifications that they've had. I've had this seminar and this seminar and this certification. One person had like 30 different seminars that they, that they attended. And that's, that's good. But some people like to get trained and trained and trained and trained and trained and trained and trained. But then, you know, it's time to work, right? There's a time to, the training is good, but, you know, there's got to there's gotta be involvement, right? The training is not valuable unless you're actually doing something with it. You know, if you learn how to win souls and then aren't winning souls, or you're not working towards it, it's not, it's not very valuable. So in our, in our training courses, we teach how to reach souls through the health message, and then we work with them to reach souls with the health message. Even in a short one-month courses, which is, which is something that we've been doing mostly, we teach the eight laws of health. We teach the common diseases. We teach the basics of nutrition. We teach how th this information can impact the community in a very powerful way. 
and we teach them how to do health expos. We put up a mock health expo in the classroom. We go through each booth. The students learn how to run the entire thing and how to talk to people and how to bridge discussions from health into spiritual topics and, and all this. So we get geared up. And then imagine if we just stop and say, well, that was wonderful. Let's all give each other a certificate now. We've taken the training, and then we leave. Likely, that church, I don't know, it would, some, I would have to say, sometimes they will never do a health expo. It's amazing. You can get the training, but you might not ever do it because you don't have confidence. Your knees start shaking. Well, I've never done one before. I saw it in a classroom. So we take them, and we do a health expo in the community, and they have to run it. You know, so I, I basically just walk around and make sure everything is going all right, but I won't run any of the booths. All, they all have to run. All the students are running all the booths. And, uh, and everyone's got a job. Some are greeting. Some are checking heights. You know, but they're all, it's impossible not to be engaged in some conversation with these people from the community. And every time I ask a student after their one-month training, what was the best part? They say, the health expo. Right? Suddenly, they were face to face with someone from the community, and, and the person was listening to them about what they had learned from that month. And they were, you know, and it was helping them, and so you know, it, it inspired them. There was a, we ran a one month training in Ireland. There are 400 late, uh, church members in the country of, of Ireland, and uh, many of them are, are more recent immigrants. There are very few Irish Seventh day Adventists, less than 200. And, uh, we, we went to a church, we did a training there, and, um, and then we went out and we did a, a health expo. They, there's not a lot of evangelism. The church is basically, you know, a few years ago they had almost given up on, on evangelism. You know, it's like, wow, it's too hard here. Right. Kind of depressed. You go to the church and there's, no one really has any confidence that they're going to be able to bring members, you know, people in. You know. I said, well, look, let's just go right down in the center of New Dairy and, um, and, we're going to we're running around Expo right in the middle of two shopping centers. People, there's a, it's kind of a thoroughfare back and forth. So we got approval to do this. We did, out, we did it outside, and we had lots of traffic. We had 200 people you know, uh, go through our screening process. And one of the lay members, he said, I, he, almost, he almost fell off his chair. He said, he was, he said I've never, I, I can't tell you the last time I've really witnessed and invited somebody to church. And I was at this expo, and you know, and he wasn't even very good at attending class. You know, he just he showed up at the expo, and and suddenly the lights came on, because he was talking to some people, and they said, "Who who are you guys? What are you guys with?" And he said, "Well, we're uh, we're Seventh Day Adventists." You know, he's kind of timid about it. And they looked at him, they're like, "What is that?" You know, it's a church. Never, they're like, "I never heard of that church." There's a church, a Seventh Day Adventist church. He says. Yeah, he says, we're a church and we, we believe in living healthfully. They're like, wow, I didn't ever know there was a church that believed in you know, living healthfully. It's amazing. Where's your church at? He's like, uh, 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 it's, it's in a, uh, 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 I don't think he'd ever told anyone his address to his church before. He's like, it's on a, 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 a 30, you know, Hamster uh, Drive. He's like, he was shaking. He just came over to me. He's like, I can't believe it. I just invited somebody to church. He said, they're going to come. I, <laughs> he's like, I'm blown away. This is, he said, this is amazing, you know, where it's non-confrontational. We have this flow, and it's easier, you know. He's like, I, I've tried to hand out tracts, and I get yelled at by people, and then it scared him off, you know. So he got, he got, you know, the devil discouraged him, and it scared him off, and now he had some, you know, revival to it. So... To do it, you know, to, and to, to be right next to them and, 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 and to show them exactly how it's done, it, it's, worth, it's worth 100 hours of class time. You just go out there for three hours and, and do, do something with them. Go with the young people or, or with whoever, door to door. You know, you just take one or two with and just show them how it's done. You know, show them how the health mess is entering wedge at the door. You know, giving out the health tracts and giving the consultation, offering the Bible studies. We've got all kinds of tactics, but you have to do it with them. You can't just sit in seminars. You know, training is good, but you have to get out there and get practical. And so that's, it, takes, it takes work. You know, it's harder. I will not, you know, I, I'll be the first one to admit, a health expo, it's a lot of work. I, I've done, I, I lost track somewhere over, around 150 some health, you know, health expos. At, at Wilder, I remember there was a time I was doing them almost every weekend for a while. I was getting kind of burned out. Loading up all the things, getting everybody organized, the vans, the, you know, making sure you have all the mouthpieces, you got a long checklist, is everything ordered, do we have batteries, do we have, do we have you know, what, you know uh, alcohol wipes, and all the things that you need, the tracks, and you organize the whole thing, 
And then you have to take it all back and bring it all back and put it all away in an organized way. And it just, you know, it's, it's work. You know, we have to be willing to work, you know, but I wouldn't recommend doing them every single weekend because it can be kind of tiring. But um, yeah, every, every, every few months or so, it is uh, a very powerful tool. When you're instructing, you know, you get into doing them a lot more than that. But it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I love them. You know, it's, it's, it's work, but at the end, I always feel refreshed about the experience. It's like, just to get out there with the community, you know, it, is, it revives your experience spiritually. For, for me, if I go too long without getting in touch with the community in some way, I feel like I'm becoming a Laodicean, you know, for somehow. Or I feel like I'm, I'm getting kind of cooled down. I'm becoming a, like a lukewarm Adventist, you know, like going to church and not, not engaging people that are not Seventh-day Adventists, you know, engaging people that, you know, don't know anything about us and actually talking with them about what we believe and so forth. And, and uh, I just like that. For me, the health message is just the way to, to, way to go. And I'm not a health professional. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I only got training at Wildwood, so I'm a health educator. I tell people, well, I'm a health educator. I teach Bible classes, too. And we, we, uh, we help people's health. And, and I explain what we do. And they always ask me, wow, you, so you're interested. What's the connection? I've even had people say, wow, health and Bible? They go, what's the connection? You know, it's like, that's a good question. <laughs> You know, it, just, it just leads right into it. It's so easy to start explaining you know, our message and our work. All right. So how, how can we, let me, let me go through some pictures here. How can we uh, you know, get a movement going where the whole church, you know, worldwide, every country, our, our lay members going out of their churches, conducting these programs, and so forth. Let me just share a few stories of, of what's, what's happening. Um, in Guatemala, I don't know if you heard the report yesterday morning, it was really, really fast, you know, seven minutes. Um, Guatemala is a country that, that has opened their doors in, entirely to the, to the health message in the last three years. Latin America, um, the gospel moves in Latin America, right? But one thing about Latin America also is that, like a lot of other cultures, they like, you know, they like their meat, you know? And, and to have someone come in and teach health is kind of touchy a little bit, you know. But so you, you kind of have to come in like this. You know, no, it's okay, it's okay. No, you know, we're 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 with you. You know, we're we're, you know, we're not we're not here to condemn and you know tell you what you need to be. You know, you guys need to be doing and everything. Just let us give a seminar. Just just hear us hear us out. And so the doors started opening and these pastors started listening and like these guys aren't so. You know, these guys didn't come in with a sledgehammer and, you know, start beating everybody up and, and telling them they're not going to go to heaven if they're eating meat and so forth. Um, came in to educate them, you know. And uh, the doors started opening. The, 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 the mission president started opening up, and that led us into the union office. And the union president started opening up, and he attended one of our, he went to visit our trainings, visited a health expo, and he looked around, and he, the light started to come on with him, and he said, this is fantastic. So he has then, he organized this summer for every pastor in the whole country to go through a one-week training. Wow. And they all had to bring their wives. Wow. So every pastor of the country and every wife came into it and, uh, and went through, well, it was over three weeks. We divided the pastors into, into three sections. And we rotated them through each one, you know, seeing the health expo and so forth, getting trained how to do it, and, uh, and the whole philosophy of, of uh, living the health message and, and reaching the community's health message. And they and they, you know, they liked it. And then, uh, you know, they all we brought the the DVDs from from ASI. We gave them three thousand. They had they said they had three thousand small groups around the country, and they're all going back. All 120 pastors, and each one has to train so many small groups how to how to get working. But let me just share what one experience. This is a health expo in Guatemala. The comp, the union president wants every church member to go through a full one month medical missionary course. He wants everybody involved with it because he saw what happened last year. Last year we did a one month training in the summer and the result of this one month training, there's was, there was 30, 30 lay members involved in the training. There was a group of about 12 of them that united together and formed a ministry group, the, the, an outreach ministry group. And they have worked this whole last year, you know, doing expos. Uh, occasionally they had a kind of, a, they had a, the plan. They did cooking classes and expos and door-to-door -door work and so forth and they, they ran evangelistic meetings. And they had 120 baptisms this last year. Amen. That group that was all formed, this ministry, from, from the training, and then it came back and showed the, the union pastor. He said, fantastic. 
120, you know, new Seventh Day Adventists, and we're a lay ministry, but we're working, we're with them. You know, we're there's no separation here. You know, we're say we're, you know, we're bringing you members, Pastor. We want to bring them in. You know, faithful to the church. You know, we don't go around talking about what the church isn't doing and so forth. We just show people how to work. This is the this, you live by example, right? You don't you don't have to point out. What, what is not going on, you point out what, what needs to be going on. And, uh, and, this, and this to get to action with it, and they like the results. So who knows, what's, uh, we don't know, this is still developing, the, all these pastors have just gotten training uh, two weeks ago, and uh, who knows what's going to happen to this country. You know, if every, every church now is going to be exposed to this, to this method of working, and um, we don't know what the Lord is going to do. But I think we should expect big things. You know? I mean, I... The, the Three Angels message spreading to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people sounds like a big thing to me. Right? And I don't see it, you know, happening at this moment. So that tells me that this is where we're going. This is where we are. This is a big jump. And God is going to do it. So shouldn't we expect that to happen? I mean, I'm just saying, you know, someone, someone asked me, did you expect these, all these people to get trained? In the beginning, you know, maybe I had a little lack of faith, but now I think, I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, I thought more should get, I thought there should be more going on. I don't know, because this is a big jump. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I mean, it's, I'm expecting millions of people to, to you know, this is what I want to, this is what I'm expecting to see, that the message is going to go with rapid fire, right? And, and we should have that faith. We shouldn't, you know, I think, well, this, we shouldn't. Fall on the ground. We, that's right. You train trainers and spread it out. It multiplies. We add. God multiplies. Just do you know mathematics? You study mathematics. Things multiply really quickly, right? Once you get past those early stages, boom. Once you get you know you get through those figures, bang. You know you can get into the millions quickly um, through the, the method of multiplication. God knows how to work that method, and He's going to do it. We just I don't want to I don't want to miss out. You know, I want to be a part of it. So we have to have faith, right? Okay. Uh, South Africa. We ran a, a six-month school. We just started a six-month school last year in South Africa. A uh, couple people, uh, South Africans, well, a South African married and American. I'm, I'm good friends with both of them. They went back and started this training, and we, we're, we're working with um, Riverside Farms. Riverside sent down two, two Bible teachers, and we united. We had a team of four, started a six-month training. Now, everyone... Was, was black in, in the, uh, uh, the four instructors were all black and they were, the place that was available, we were praying about where to do the school and um, you know, I was telling them, these are, these are close friends of mine, I said, yo, bro, Cabello, we, I would like to try to send a, a, you know, a white worker to work with you because we want to make a, a witness to the church there that we're to work together. You know, if I was there, he and I are like brothers, this is what we do, we wanna, and I wanted to have that example. Well, it didn't work out, so, so, uh, it was they were there was they were they were all they were all black, and so but the only place available was in the middle of the most racist white area in the country is what was what we were told and I thought oh, okay well this is let's see what happens right so so these you know my buddy and and and, and these other teachers they come together and they start this school and uh, you know ninety percent of the students were also were also black and so. They started, they were told, hey, this isn't going to work. There's no Seventh-day Adventist church in this area. It's very prejudiced area. And so we, so Cabello, Cabello's got a lot of life and a lot of energy. He's, he's, power, he's a powerhouse. And he's got this huge smile. And you can't turn the man away. All right, so he teaches these students, and they start working with the community. House to house for six months. Cooking schools, health expos, door-to-door work, track, just big smiles. You know, just just being just working with the community for a whole six months. There was no Seventh Day Adventist church in the entire air, in the whole district, right? They had a campaign at the end, an old-fashioned tent meeting, and have 20 people from the community attending church with them, right? Yeah. So now we have a total unity. So these are these are new converts coming in, and now you've got this congregation mixed, black and white, half and half down the middle, and they love each other. And it's a tremendous witness. And the conference looked at it and they said, how did you guys do that? <laughs> how did you do that? You know, they would be the last ones that they would think would be sexual in that area, right? God knows what to do. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say. So um, the Holy Spirit worked. 
through God's method of, of working. Amen. On an individual basis, working with the people. Not just, you know, raising up some money and throwing, you know, mailing out some tracts, inviting them to a tent meeting and, and hoping that some people show up. Hoping that 1% of the people show up and that you can baptize, you know, four or five. But they, this, this is a small area anyway. They had 20 people that were uh, attending church and are getting ready to be baptized. And so now we, you know, we see nothing. There are no limitations. There is no prejudice. You could have a thousand prejudices lined up on you, but if you work like Christ's work, it breaks them all down. So I was inspired. I'm inspired by what's going on in South Africa. Across Africa... Yeah, it's, uh, we, we, we've, uh, <clears throat> the results have been even bigger in number, but I, that one to me has had the most prejudice stacked up against. The, card was, the cards were stacked against us, but let me just share a couple of other experiences. Um, in the, it, both in the cities and in the jungles and, and villages everywhere, the same exact method is working. This picture is from the Congo. We ran a, a one-month course, and, and uh, we grabbed up our health expo equipment and hiked it into the jungle to a local village that had a chief, and we asked him for permission to run this health expo. So we hung these banners on, you know, you know, on these little, <laughs> this is our, this, these are our PVC pipe banners here, some bamboo sticks hanging, you know, and some hanging from the trees and so forth, all around this village were, the, were these booths, health expo booths. And uh, our students were there, and, and the three that we had trained, we all did this, did this, this uh, together. And everyone in the entire village went through the health expo. So they're going through the, the, the health expo. This is a village-wide you know, movement. And uh, as, they, as they finished up, one of these, one of these brothers was, was preaching. It wasn't this guy. This guy's, this guy's preaching about rest here. But there was another one like him um, and another booth, the Trust in God booth. And he was just preaching. He did the Trust in God booth like, like we had never seen it done before. Usually the Trust in God booth, you're, how did you like the health expo? You know, was it, what was your favorite booth? You know, how was your blood pressure? And, Here's a health track, and, and then, you know, try to work into Bible studies. This guy was just straight preaching, as he's like, Jesus Christ wants, wants you to come into your life, and he starts preaching the three angels' message and everything right at the Trust in God booth. And all these, all these, all these guys were just staring at him in, in, in wonder, and then he made an appeal to them that we need to study the Bible more, and, and uh, he's offering Bible studies. Would anyone like to study the Bible with him? And the chief of the village stands up. He says, I would like to. <laughs> the chief. <laughs> and after that, everyone else agreed, and the whole village won Bible studies. So they just, <laughs> the chief led the way, right? Yeah. So, so uh, you know, they, uh, he can't, he's, he's making return visits and working with that whole village, working for their conversions to the truth. Interestingly, on the way back, they're walking back with their things, and, and two of our girls from, from, uh, from trained at Wildwood were there, and they're walking back, and this lady Run, just runs by, like kind of like it's an emergency, kind of run like this and she seemed to be holding something. It looked like she was pregnant or something, right? And then they walk a little bit further. She's in a hut and she's giving birth oh. in this hut, right? She had just ran to somebody for help. She's lays, she lays down on the ground and gives birth, all right? And I told these girls, it says, you never know what circumstance you're going to run into in the mission field. You've got to be ready. <laughs> these girls look and they're like, and they're like, can you help us? <laughs> and, and the girl's almost fainted on, on the spot. <laughs> so a, a, a girl gets out a, a pocket knife and sterilizes it and helps the woman out and um, takes care of the umbilical cord and so forth. And, they, and then they went and found somebody to come over. And, well, no, that's not the, no, sorry, I missed I miss the end of it. They cut the umbilical cord and, and, and helped her out she stood up and said, thank you, and walked off. <laughs> Grabbed, she took her baby. She said, thank you very much. And she, wa and she kept going down the trail. <laughs> so that's, that was amazing when I heard that. <laughs> so, health Expo. Health Expo. That's not, generally not one of our booths. <laughs> OK, it's an emergency. But you know, we need to be able to help when needed. You know, we just pray. You know, I'm not, we don't. We're not teaching our students, you know, to uh, in a six-month course how to deliver babies, but in our advanced course, we, we give a little a quick advance. You know, there's a there is a little training in case you run into a situation like that in the mission field, which that proves that you do. 
Okay. Now, also in uh, the, the results, we're, we're, we're kind of, I want to be discussing what's, what's working, what's not. Um, you cannot substitute door-to-door -door ministry. And um, it is so inspiring and so encouraging to do door-to-door -door work, especially in countries that have needs, real needs. You don't, you, know, you do, you do hut-to-hut work in Indonesia or the Philippines or in Af places in Africa, you run into all kinds of situations. Right? People have no access to medical help. They're out there dying in their, in their, in their, in their huts, and you end up just stumbling in and helping them. Well, um, our students had some amazing experiences in, in Africa, um, visiting people house to house. I, I won't show you all the pictures. They came back with pictures of a uh, man that had his whole leg look like it was going to rot and fall off. It was just covered in, in, in mush. And uh, these, you know, all these situations that they just find going door to door people, there's extreme need, and nobody's there to help them. So we at least are praying for them. These girls helped this, this man with his leg was just, I don't know, it just looked like a huge scab all the way down to, his, to the bottom. He said he hadn't washed his leg in seven years. He was told that it needed to be dried to something. So he never washed for seven years. So these girls prayed with him and tried to convince him that he needs to wash his leg. So and about, we talk, they taught him about hydrotherapy. And he opened up and he let them for 30 days straight. They visited this man and gave him um, leg baths. Hot and cold, just going back to hot and cold and praying for him. And the legs started to get better. And, 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 and he was, you know, those girls didn't even know what it was. You know, but they didn't know what to do for him. He's just out there with this, no one was out there to help him. So they were just on their knees praying. And they didn't know what to do. They just put his leg in, in cool water and in warm water, <laughs> making sure you know they were taught carefully not to be careful not to burn someone. So just warm and, and, and cool, and just back and forth, and praying with him, and counseling him. And his heart started to open up. His leg. They said when they left after 30 days, his leg was 70% better. After seven years of just laying there like that, and he was in tears. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. We need to, we need to mingle with the people. Right. And they, they can see our hearts. They can feel our hearts. If we desire their good, they see it, they feel it, and their heart breaks. That's soul winning work. That's how Christ worked for souls. We need to teach church members to do this work. A medical missionary does not mean you have to, it's not a doctor in a hospital. It is a doctor in a hospital, but it's also you reaching someone and praying with them in their home for their health. Everyone is to work for Christ. And here's, anyway, this, this, this man was, was, was very touched by the, the ministry. And people, just even at a health expo, you know, it's amazing how many people are not shown love and not shown attention. It's, it's, it's saddening how cruel the world is. And just for some people to come out of their homes and come to this public thing and sit down and have someone caring for them, smiling with them, helping them on a, on a scale. You know, in some of these countries, just, just, just to let them step on a scale and write down what their weight is. They feel so special. <laughs> it's, it's, seriously, it's, you know, they, 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 you're, they're, you're winning their, friend, their friendship immediately. Okay, but I got I to gotta, I gotta share about you know, Indonesia. Indonesia, more Muslims in this country per capita than any other country in, in, in the world. Just millions, millions of, of Muslims. Um, I don't see a lot of history in the, in the past that I, that I know about of strong medical missionary efforts on, on a church, a lay member uh, level. Um, we worked, we went in there with a thousand missionary movement and did some short training courses and, it's, and the results were working very good. And then we did some, we did two one month courses and then the union approached us and they said, you know what, we like the results and we believe the health message is going to be the way that we're going to reach the Muslims. So they gave us the school. Um, this is a school building. Well. They gave us kind of a dumpy school, really, is what they did. It wasn't being used. It was, bro it was big cracks in it, you know, big sections of the concrete were broken down. It, wasn't, it was used like 20 years ago. They said, look, you guys just take it. So we had 20 guys came in there, and they did, they did, they did masonry work and, and smoothed all the patches and, and painted the entire building and redid the grounds around it, and it was looking fresh. I mean, they totally transformed this place in, in three or four months' time and started a six-month school. And this was the, these are our students, 30 students in a, in a, in a full six-month program. They've just graduated in June and have been having some, some wonderful experiences. 
So they're going around, they've got their little, the, the, the school's name is Healing Way, Healing Way. So Healing Way Indonesia, these, uh, these jerseys that, they're, that they use at their, at their health expo. These women here are Muslim, right? You see them, you see them around. They come out, they come out and they'll come to a health expo. And uh, it's been, it's been uh, amazing to see you know, the, the, uh, the impact that it's having, the results. It's the same. This lady right here, this is a person and she's got a heart and a mind, just like the person in Africa, just like the person in Manhattan, New York City. They're all people, right? They were raised in these religions, but they're people. And when someone shows love to them, they respond to it. You know, it's not very complicated. It doesn't, there's not this like very comp, what if there was a very complex methodology of reaching every culture in the world? Do you know how many cultures there are in the world? A lot more than countries, right? What is there, 215 countries or so in the world? Right. In some countries, in India alone, how many cultures are there? How many, how many different people groups do you find? Right. Thousands. Right. What if there was a special way, what kind of map would we need to work for these souls of every culture of the entire world? This would be very complicated. Right. This, is, this is one way. Right. This is one way. It's Christ showed the example. Right. Love them. Work for them. Their heart gets softened, no matter what country they're from, no matter what religion they're, they're with. And so these, these women as well are, getting, are getting, uh, going through uh, these health, the, this health expo team now is traveling from different parts, running these expos, channeling these, these, uh, these, these uh, Muslim folk into health programs. Um, this, is a, this is a health expo. Um, they've chosen to have the counseling booth on this floor mat. Uh, it's, it's you know, culture, right? No, no problem at all. So this, this is our student here. She's taken the six-month training, and she's counseling with them on the laws of health. And they're listening to her, and they like her because she loves them. And she's, trying, she's there to help them. She's a very nice person. And so um, next, they bring them into, I forget if I got a picture of the, of the, of the uh, seminar. This is just more. Does it look like this lady's enjoying the health expo? Look at that smile. See that? <laughs> they're, all, they're enjoying themselves, right? A lot of these women are not treated very well. You know, they come into a health expo and they, they respond to it. You know, these people like me. I want to be around them. Right? They, we should, people should want to be around us. Isn't that right? <laughs> people wanted to be around Jesus, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're liking it. Um, this is door-to-door -door ministry. You can't substitute door-to-door -door ministry. I love health expos, but it's a little crowded sometimes and to really get in deeper with someone, you know, you, you, we, you, you really need to visit them. Often when we're doing our expos, we're taking addresses and so forth, and we're doing follow-up visits. We go into their home. These ladies wanted to be visited, and uh, these are all of our students here with their, with their shirts. They came over to visit these ladies, Muslim ladies here, and uh, counseling them, talking with them, and um, they had, they, uh, look at that, give her, give her a kiss on the cheek when they left. They, they, they love, you know, they loved our girls. They, they want to be around them. It's, it's having, it has an impact on them. personal work, personal work. Yeah, it's, it's good, you know. It's good that Adventists are known as the health denomination. And it's good that, you know, that there's a, if there's a hospital and it's doing a great work and people know that there's an Adventist hospital, that's good. And that if the Adventist denomination can in general have a healthy influence over the population, that's good. But you cannot substitute personal, visitational type ministry work in their homes by lay members. Right? It all needs to work together. There needs to be this, 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 this synergy. Um, it's, yeah, soul winning work is about getting close to people. It's about building friendships. It's not, it's not this like broad, you know, um, waves of influence that kind of emit from the Adventist church and people just drawn into the, to, 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 to the denomination, to, to church. It doesn't, it doesn't really work, it doesn't really work that way. That can, those kind of broad strokes, you know, can help maybe give, break down some prejudice and so forth, but there has to be that individual contact. <clears throat> Question. Yes, sir. Okay, well, there's a lot of different plans that we're working on. 
while they're in the course, right, they, they're, they're, they're not getting stipend, they're students. So they pay a small tuition. All of our students across the world, all, all the, the 5,000 that, 5, that have gone through our training, they pay for their training, no matter how poor they are. Even if it's a sack of rice, they bring a sack of rice, and that's their contribution to the training. Nobody gets it, unless, unless they don't even have rice. You know, then we'll, you know, there's, there's some cases. But uh, there's, there should be, uh, you know, they will take it more seriously if they invest into it. And then, um, while students, of course, they're doing the work. They're being shown how to work. Then afterwards, yeah, the question as to how can someone be supported, well, we go through a screening process, and we're, we're offering to stipend workers to become missionaries. That's one of, one of the works that, that LIGHT does. We, we can also, as graduates of, of our programs, other schools have needs and have help. There's so much need, and we're, we're sending them off. For example, we have a six-month school in the Philippines. We just graduated 20 students. Five of them have gone to Indonesia to help with the school there, and they're getting a stipend for their work. They're getting room, they're getting board, and a small stipend. Right? It's wonderful for them. They, they're, they're thrilled with it. Another, another couple are, going, are in Cambodia right now working. You know, other ones are in the Philippines still working. Other ones had other plans. You know, they got the training, and then they're off to do other things. The, at every school, we send out, uh, in, we send out um, alerts of what the needs are. And I can only say there's not enough, there's not enough workers. Yeah, so there's a tremendous amount of need. So if they want to work you know, with, with us, you know, the door's open. But there's other organizations, and on their own, yeah, they can find a way to support themselves and just do personal work. At least we want them to get back to their churches and start working to you know, liven up, you know, train their church, become trainers themselves, and get the church active. OK, this is, uh, again, visitation, Indonesia. Working with this man, this man was very, very, very sick, and so they're they're visiting him, uh, working working with him. Let me just check. Okay, moving along. This is Kazakhstan. Um, two two uh, uh, two friends of mine from um, the Ukraine. They worked in the Ukraine for several years. This is uh, this is Svetlana Alexachuk. Formerly Alexa Chuk, and this is her new husband here, Dovlet. They both spent the they spent last year at Wildwood again on a return visit. We're organizing plans to work uh, Central Asia. She's they, these these folk have a lot of experience. You, you might, I don't know you guys know Dr. Grievous. He went he went there as well. He's he's helping them. But they they're invited by the conference president in in, Kaz, in Kazakhstan to start a health health club, or and a and a health they call it a health cabinet, but it's like a a health cabinet in, in these, some of these Rus like uh, Central Asia and kind of Russian-speaking countries, a health cabinet is a room in a church or next to a church where you do massage and consultations and give out health literature and maybe even hydrotherapy treatments. Right? This is a health cabinet. And this is a method that there is, is growing. Last year, I wasn't at ASI last year because I was in um, Armenia, and, there, and the, the, the health director was working on this health cabinet idea. So we, we trained some people to help work in these, in these cabinets. We, I would call them room, I guess, a health room or, or, or something like that. So these, these, these two have done church trainings in Kazakhstan this past year. They've only been there for one year. Um, they've traveled around doing trainings. And they've got a health room where they give consultations. And they're busy every day. They give consultations, massage, and hydrotherapy treatments. And people pay for them. And this is supporting their, their way. Then they took, stepped it up a level, and the people that they met with the consultations, they brought into a New Start lifestyle program of sorts right, at the conference headquarters. So this is the conference building here. There's 12 um, lifestyle, uh, lifestyle guests here. And the, all those lifestyle guests came to church. This is the church in, uh, in Kazakhstan. And these, are all, these are the lifestyle guests. Um, many of them are Muslim and have never been in a Christian church before. But through going through the lifestyle program, they felt so comfortable with Svetlana and Dovlet. They love them so much. They just they didn't. They wanted to go with them. They wanted to see what that church is like. They wanted. They wanted to go. This is a huge step for a Muslim to take to go to a Christian church. And there, and she she relates this. Let me just let me just share a letter that 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 she uh, that she sent to me recently. This is from Svetlana. We had one Muslim lady in this lifestyle session. It was her first time. It was. It was her first time in her life that her husband 
let her go somewhere. Did you hear that? The first time in her life that her husband let her go somewhere, and she was blessed by the lifestyle session, healed. We would pray with her each time, and in the end, she told me, quote, We need to have lifestyle working that all simple people like us would know who is Seventh Day Advent, who is Adventist and about Christ. Mm -hmm. That's a Muslim lady response. Never been allowed to leave her husband. Yeah. No. No. He was open. Some. I think now, if I'm remembering the story here, right? Let me. Let's let's read here. Her husband. Praise God. Her husband let her come because he first came to us as a patient to health consultation. And he could see that he can trust us. We can see that God, his Holy Spirit, is working on the hearts of the Muslim people. So he came to the health cabinet. You know. Health uh, consultation, he said, my wife needs to come. I trust you people. Yeah. The Seventh-day Adventist denomination is the closest to the Muslims. Because they don't drink, they don't smoke, and when they yeah. hear that we as Adventists don't drink and smoke, they say, you're not Christian. Yeah. Because they, they uh, think that all Christians smoke and drink and eat pork, etc. That's right. Do any of yeah, things. it's not that hard of a, I mean, it's still a big transition, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of connections yeah. that we can make with them. And, uh, yeah, this is just really inspiring. So their, their work has been a, 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 a incredible. Let me, let me, uh, what happened here? Did I go backwards? Okay. These are, this is a Muslim couple here from, from Kazakhstan. This is an architect. And he is, um, he also came to, through the, the consultations and so forth. And they're having Bible studies with him in their home privately. And he wants to be baptized now. Amen. Amen. This is not, you know, our church has not been very successful in these countries. And, and Central Asia is really, really serious stuff. There's, there's, no, there's no doubt about it. It is really serious. Very, it's, it's been closed. It's been difficult. To have stories like this is, is just... We need, to, we need to pray for them. They're not, they're, this is not an easy work for them at all. They have a lot of trials from in and out. Five days they spent in Uzbekistan. Watch, look, look what they, they did. In, in a in five-day period, from 9 to 5 in the, in, the, in the days, they did health consultations, hydrotherapy, and massage treatments. And then in the evening, they did um, health lectures, 7 to 8.30. So this is a program. I mean, they, they were brand new. No one even knew who they were. They just landed in Uzbekistan. They opened up for health consultations, massage, and lectures in the evening. Look at the numbers. 153 health consultations in five days. There's a lineup of people waiting to, to get to them. It, these are, you're not going to do this with, you're not going to start an evangelistic campaign in Uzbekistan and have Muslim people showing up to it. You, you won't. Right? 137 treatments. Testimony from that experience, Uzbekistan. Yesterday I was trying to, this was, this was a lady that came in for consultation in Uzbekistan. Yesterday I was trying to do a suicide, but robe wasn't strong enough, so it wasn't successful. This is Svetlana now. I was so, it was so difficult to hear that. We prayed with her, and then she received a treatment. We also had a pastor with us, and we would send people to him that they can hear about the love of Jesus. We now have a team there that will continue to work with those people there. So, Amen. yeah. Health message. Powerful. And those, again, those are, those are Svetlana and Dovla, they're just lay train, lay train people. They're just doing real, real simple work. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit quicker now. Moldova, um, as well, running, running health ex expos. We have a, a school there. Uh, first world country, may I share, uh, Austria. This is, this is TGM. Uh, a school that we helped to, to help to start. We we trained all the all the teachers there, um, and they 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 they're in. Our, I should have put a picture of their lifestyle center, but they they have a, a bed and breakfast that was purchased for like a million dollars by some Adventist businessman and wants it to be used for lifestyle and training. 
I, I have no idea where that money just came out of the sky. This, this man says he, he gives all of his profits to the Lord's work. He owns a, huge, a big business, and he gives it's probably one of the most generous people I've heard about in, in, in Europe that I, that I know. It's, it's, it's amazing. He lives in a small apartment upstairs, and he gives thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to, to God's work and, lives, and li drives a simple car and lives in a, in a small he lives in an upstairs apartment his parents live downstairs and he just lives really really simple He's, it's incredible but they just invited everyone in the community they were door to door and invited everybody to come over to this life to this like bed and breakfast look at the you know this is what they fed them the, their neighbors right? all this really good food just a full display of, of um uh, vegan, you know, vegan desserts, and uh, I don't know which dessert this is right here, but if anyone speaks German. <laughs> um, but they, you know, building friendships, you know, with, with people. First world, third world, everywhere. This is a picture from England. Um, England is also a, a, a tough nut to crack. Um, I would say England is almost harder than Uzbekistan. The, the British mindset is, is it's pretty wicked. You know, the, it is aggression to Christianity. It is not a Christian country at all. It's like 10% Christian, right? And I've done door to my, I, I, I didn't believe it was so bad. I, I did door to, I, so I went with a friend when I was there. I got a friend that lives there. And um, we went door to door work, and I spent hours trying to get someone to take a survey, and I couldn't even get one survey the whole day. It was rough. They were not happy I was knocking on their door <laughs> at all. So, you know, how, I mean, I was as soft and polite and the health, you know, and they were just like, boom, you know, just like angry about it, yelling at us, drunk people, they had witchcraft all over in their houses and goblins and things. And I just felt, I was like, Bro, this is serious. You know, it is really serious there. So we have to somehow draw these people out you know, to some sort of non-confrontational health thing to even have a chance. It is, it is really, really difficult, the British. But we're getting, we're getting uh, we did a health expo there during one of our courses, and there was two young, two young guys, British guys, drinking straight vodka from a bottle, smoking, young, young guys. And I was like, uh, I, was like uh, I don't know if these guys are going to be interested. And my, my wife is like, we got to go ask them anyway. So I go over there, and I was like, uh, hey, guys, health expo tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon, you guys should come over. And, uh, and he, he looks at his bottle of vodka and a cigarette, and he goes, health? <laughs> health expo? I said, well, look, man, maybe you got some family or somebody. Would just, why don't you just bring, bring some? Surely you have someone that you can bring over to this you know, free health screening. I couldn't believe it. The guy showed up with his dad there, and they went through every booth of the whole expo, and they said they really liked it. <laughs> I was shocked. Yeah, we just have to, we just have to not have be prejudiced ourselves to people, right? And just give them a chance and, and reach out to them. Okay, so what's working? Um, just to summarize what we've been talking about, I'll give some chance for a question while we finish up. Um, short training courses. Our churches need to become training courses. How can we expect a movement of with untrained workers? We need to train an army. The churches themselves need to be the, you know. You can't, it's not so easy to start a school with this big building and everything. The easiest thing is to start to doing trainings immediately in the churches. We've even run whole six-month courses in a church. People just coming in every single day. The church is a living training center. Action. People sleeping on you know, parts of the church and so forth. And, and meals provided. The church is alive all week long. You know, it's, it's a good experience. Short training courses. We've got to have it. Community programs with how much of the church? The whole church involved. That's why I like health expos, because everybody can come out. Even the kids can help. Everybody can do something. Pass out invitations or go around just anything. It's, it's, it's easy. It's fun. It's, it, gets the, it gets the church more used to mingling with men and women from the, from the communities. Follow-up programs. You, it's really not that successful to just have a health expo and not do anything afterwards. Usually, you don't see a lot of results coming from that. There's, there's, there's an effect. There, there can have some results. But it, to really win souls, you know, to get them involved in the, in the movement, you, you have to have follow-up programs. You've got to build that relationship. It's not so easy. You can't do it in, in, a, in a 30 minutes. So cooking classes, seminars, 
other things that you can do. Personal work. Personal work. We have to have it. We can't avoid it. We cannot preach the gospel hiding from people. We cannot preach the gospel hiding behind, you know, advertisements and commercials and so forth. Those are good. You get them into the programs, but we need to have the personal work at some at some point there. You cannot avoid you can't you can't skip over the, the individual personal labor. And that's where we get tested with our, you know, our selfishness. Where Adventists are like the uh, you know, like the parable of the Great Supper, Luke 14, with all kinds of excuses once the supper comes. You know, well, I've got my job, and I've got possessions, and I've got a family, and the excuses build up why we can't get involved in God's work. We have to get rid of these excuses. Right? Yeah. Those are things holding us back. There are things that are a blessing, family, work, your possessions. Those things are there for a blessing, but they become a curse to us when we allow them to stop, hinder, hinder us from preaching the gospel and doing what God wants us to do. Okay. What's not working? Health expos with no follow-up. It doesn't really, it doesn't, not a lot of effect with that. Health expos and seminars held in Seventh-day Adventist churches, generally, okay, if you can, have it in a neutral location. How are you going to break down prejudice Expecting a Muslim to come to a Seventh-day Adventist church. That's, that's not where you have the program. Or a British. Or, you know, a Baptist that doesn't like Seventh-day Adventists. Right? We have health expos in, in Alabama. And we, we, we don't say that it's put on by the Adventist church. And then the Baptists come through. And they found out at the end. Like, wow, what Baptist, what church do you go to? What, what Baptist church put on all this? It's actually, we're Seventh-day Adventists. Huh? I, I've, I've seen peop, pe, people's face drop to the floor almost when I tell them we're Seventh-day Adventists. They're like, Seventh-day Adventists? I was like, yeah, see, we're not so bad, are we? It's like, well, I guess not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people, places where people are. That's the easiest thing. You don't even have to advertise then. So we just try to get in. We, advertising is good because you have the personal work as well, but uh, yeah, we do them in Walmarts. You know. Wal in, in this country, you know, Walmarts, shopping centers, parks, community centers, we have to, you gotta get out the marketing, you gotta get the invitations going. It's gotta be door to door, yeah, invitations, posters, and yeah, overseas. Yeah, in Brazil we did an expo in a, in a community center, a big a basketball court that was, that was covered with, a, with an awning. And uh, the, the pastor wanted to cancel the meeting. He said, we only have two days. Look, I, he was supposed to set the whole thing up. He forgot. He, and he wanted to cancel the expo. I said, I said, Pastor, we can still do it. He says, no, you'll never get people. We only have two days. So we can get the people here in two days. Don't, don't worry. Just let us do it. He said, OK. So we did. We, had, we paid a guy on a motorcycle to go around with a big megaphone, like advertising the you know, health expo, Sunday, 3 to 6, you know, just blaring up and down. They just drive, you know. It was driving me crazy, but you know we might as well use it for good. Right? So you know he's the the motorcycle guy, just running around the whole town. He was on Friday, and then on Sabbath, everybody went out door to door with little card invitations. Two days, one motorcycle guy, and one Sabbath afternoon, we had 300 people show up. It doesn't take. It's not hard. It's not hard to get people in. But yeah, not at a not at a not a not at the church. That's church is the next. You know we're breaking down the prejudice, then bring them into the church. Okay. Evangelistic campaigns with no personal door-to-door -door effort being made. Yeah. This is really small. I, I, I don't, I'm not looking for 1% you know, of efforts. I, we we want to work with people directly as Christ did and see the efforts. Okay. Um, quest, questions or comments by anybody? You've got, well, it is, it is 12. I apologize for going all the way to the end, but maybe take a few, a couple minutes here. Have you tried linking with uh, convention Excellent idea. The only one that I can think of that we've done in Chattanooga was for like a health convention. Yeah, we've gone in there, but um, that's a good idea. They oftentimes yeah. have space available. They haven't been able to rent out to any distributors, and they would welcome something right. like that. Stephen Gideon on an urn, because you have <coughs> to to their defense. Very good idea. Conventions, yeah. We do a lot of flea markets. Um, you know, we rent a booth. 
and, uh, and at, a, at a flea market, but a convention center. Yeah, because we, we need to reach professionals as well. We've we got to reach all, all classes. What's that? The Kentucky Derby. The Kentucky Derby, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've done them at, we've, we've, we've done some things at, at the Olympics in, in Italy, on the Winter Olympics, we had a juice bar mm -hmm. and a health expo going on. Mm -hmm. It's good, yeah. Have you thought about trying to work in conjunction with, like here in the States, county, uh, different counties, the public health department? Oh, I could tell, uh, yeah, tons of stories about working with the government in a, in a lot of these places, especially in third world countries. We've got, yeah, there's amazing things, you know, happening. I'm just, I'm just running out of time, but we have, we, in, in Guatemala, the government asked us to train all of their nurses in one whole region how to do health expos. They want to do them too. Wow. You know, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, we, we always like to go with, yeah, because you can, you can make friends with the, gov with the local government, municipal municipality, and the health person, and health minister, and so forth. And uh, throughout the Caribbean, we've done a lot with, with them. And um, yeah, yeah, excellent. I, yeah. What's the cost per student? Well, it depends where. So if you want to get trained in the Philippines, I think it's $400 for the six-month course and a sack of rice, maybe. Okay. But, it, but if in the US, yeah. it's, uh, and that's in English. So I actually ha did have an American go to the Philippines because it was cheaper. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah. And then they, they got some mission experience living in a hut. And yeah. The guy was kind of overweight, and he lost 50 pounds during the six-month course. <laughs> it's a big guy. Huge guy, actually. You know, and he, he came back. He was a changed man, of course, in the Philippines. In the, in the U.S., you can get training. Like at at Wilder, it's, it's around 3,000. There's online courses that we have on our website, The Lighting the World. You can get online training. We have a one-month course. And the people that are finishing the online training, are we're inviting them to go on a mission trip with us to get some practice, because we have to get some practice. Right? And so that's, I think, $500 for the full online, the online training. But yeah, we're not really, it, the light project is being sponsored through donations, so it's not, you know, there's definitely no like trying to, trying to make money out of it. Everyone from the top down just makes a small stipend. And, um, but we are trying to get a little bit more self-supporting because it's a little rough to only have to be with donations. So that's why we have like the online training of fee and so forth, just to try to get a little bit to keep us going. Yeah, yeah, the DVDs at the at our booth are they're the they're the practical element of, of the of the training. So yeah. Yeah, those as well. You know, if we're we're trying to use web more with because we can we think we can we can branch out our training broader and faster in a quick way through through the internet. But you gotta have the personal work as well. All right, why don't we why don't we all stand together and pray so we can we can wrap it up. Thank you for your involvement and um, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we, we just ask that your spirit would go with us. Thank you for the discussion we've had. Um, we see the plan is, is, is there. Christ laid it in front of us. We're thankful it's not complicated. Um, give us faith, Lord, to step out and not be afraid to, to, to reach out to people, um, to go where you are calling us. Here in the U.S., we have so many resources. Help us to not neglect the, the world in need the church in need in, in many countries for, for that need training and so forth. Um, help us, Lord, to, to step outside of ourselves, to not be so self-centered. Uh, cure us of this Laodicean disease. Help us to be men and women full of faith and confidence in Jesus, not in ourselves. And uh, thank you for the, the moments we've had this morning. Bless the rest of this day. And may, you, may this whole ASI convention be something that inspires and revives us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.